G'day folks. Well, while it's a little bit windy out here, I figured I'd uh, finish off the autopsy on these two, at least a disassembly. Um, the wind is going to interfere with video work, so don't expect too much, but I just want to get these things broken down and out of the way. Uh, as you can see, I've already recovered the refrigerant and uh, disconnected the compressors in a previous video on those two. That one there is still complete and charged, so I'm not dism dismantling that just yet but it, it needs to meet the same fate because the coil is badly degraded. You can see that one there. <laughs> it's not happy at all. Pile of mulched coil fins down the bottom. So yeah. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and strip these out while I've got another little project on the go. In between projects anyway. There's a lot of electronics and things in them that I'll show. Uh, single phase fan which is of no real use to me I'll probably dismantle those or scrap them the fan motor bearings I think the fan motor bearings are a bit noisy but we'll do an autopsy and run on the compressors that's a nice big uh, Tecumseh uh, two or three cylinder one date code is A2699 so 2699 something like that yeah I'd say it'd be 1999 era and that one there's got a Copeland scroll in it. It used to be R407C. There's a the fan cap, which is 50 microfarads. It's got a large uh, updraft fan in it. Um, yeah, what else can I say? There's lots of little bits in there. There's a phase rotation monitor. I have had power up to the control on this, but the control readout doesn't really do anything. You do get, you just get fault codes because there's no water pressure, there's no refrigerant pressure, there's all kinds of things wrong at the moment, but yeah, it does work, it powers up. I just don't have three phase to run it properly. I can use the VFD, but you, as soon as this thing builds head pressure, the VFD will go out on overcurrent. So this thing's going to get pulled to bits. And that's for the control panel up top. It goes up here. So that's all the control interface is. And this is the one that split chill the drum. Hmm. Okay, well I've got the top of the unit off. And as you can see what the heat exchange is on top. Uh, with refrigerant tubing coming in from the condensing unit below. Uh, it's a 24 volt control transformer and control relays which go to the main power on selector and the Carell brand thermo controller which is connected to the uh, chiller drum. This sensor in inserts inside the chiller drum just below where, where the refrigerant goes in there's a tube leading into the drum and that's where this sensor goes and this thing tells the unit when to run and when not to. You uh, program the uh, temperature that you desire and it will run the compressor until it reaches that temperature and then cycle off. Very basic stuff. And this thing, this thing runs on 12 to 24 volts AC. So there's plenty of applications for it. Unfortunately I can't use it in the car because it's AC not DC. But if I find a DC one I want to put a um, temperature monitor on my car's uh, cooling system. So it will still come in handy, it's just not a uh, DC monitor. Little panel lamps again. I don't know what voltage they are, but they're probably 24 volt. Oh no, they're 230 volt. So 230, 230 240 volt uh, power indicator lamps. Very nice stuff. And uh, yeah, the system's decommissioned so I can cut this tubing off and remove the heat exchange as a, as a whole unit. Probably cut it off here and lift the top off as a separate unit. Yeah, now that the outer shroud's off this whole thing's loose. It's got a very old uh, Virginia KMP filter dryer, bi-flow. Yep, liquid dryer. See, these things can heat and cool, but these were only ever used for cooling. And that's where the temperature sensor goes, down inside there. Yep, 
Hmm. That should give some idea of why we decided to can this one months ago. This one's been sitting on, on a pallet at work for the last 12 months. We decommissioned it ages ago. That's pretty bad and that's after I cleaned it and it ran again for a while. Like, nah. Beyond it. Past it. <laughs> it's got a nice quarter horsepower fan though. Three thick. Okay, well, once all the electrics is out, it's pretty simple to dismantle it. Just undo all the screws holding it, holding the coil to the base, and away you go. Um, well, what have we got? We've got a liquid side, high side pressure gauge, oh, sorry, pressure switch. There was a uh, thermal switch clamped under here as well. Thermal expansion valve. There's lots of oil around from uh, existing leaks. This system was always leaky. Uh, it had been recharged a few times but finally met its doom about 12 months ago. There's oil around this pressure switch as well. Reversing valve as, in, as normal, selecting between heat cool or defrost, whatever. That's the sensing bulb for the TXV on the uh, inlet for the uh, reversing valve. Suction line. Suction line accumulator, liquid accumulator. Very rusty. That's all the powder coating coming off. Yuck. Very rusty suction line accumulator. And the coils. I'm just going to cut the ends off it and be done with it. Plain copper alley, and that's about it. And we'll keep the compressor for a bit later on as a uh, experiment. <laughs> Big old Tecumseh compressors. It's an AG188UT. Hmm. 460 volt, 60 hertz, 380 to 420 volt, 50 hertz. 79 locked rotor amps, three phase only. <laughs> Pretty decent. So anyway, I'm going to get the 9 inch grinder out and just cut all this stuff up for copper. And uh, yeah, that'll be the end of this one. Then move on to that one. Okay, I've got the top off the other one. As you can see, it's got a different kind of water heat exchanger. And a very ruptured one. This is the one that's split. Yeah, you can see a nice big crack all the way down here. Looks like polypropylene, but it's uh, ruptured rather badly. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to tear this thing apart. Unfortunately, the fans are 480 volt single phase. Even though they have a 5 microfarad run capacitor, they're still single phase. The uh, neutral from the line in is completely disconnected. It's just L1, 2 and 3. So yeah, can't use those fans for anything else, especially not now. <laughs> Crunch. And unfortunately the rest of this is plastic, so that has to go to the rubbish dump. Oh well, who cares. Yes, heat exchangers, that's going to be the fun part. This, is, this will be the unique part compared with the rest of the thing. We've got refrigerant out, refrigerant in, water, what does that say, water input through the centre and water output through the outer jacket. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I want to open this thing up. The other ones I'm not going to destroy, but this one here will destroy because the housing's all split and mangled. There's a thermal expansion valve, sensing bulb again on the uh, input of the TXV. I like the way they bridged it together there. <laughs> Just lump that solder on. But this thing's a cheap, flimsy unit. Made in America, but made out of crap. 
never worked properly even when it was new it was pulled out and replaced with a Chinese unit that did 10 times better this thing just came back to the workshop and stayed in the storage area for a while until we needed a replacement for that one and it still sucked <laughs> this thing was made in 2006 or 2007 so it's not even that old it's just crap to begin with junk <laughs>